All right, let's go ahead and get started. Well, I'm in a space that you've never seen before. I am in our tool shed. And believe it or not, this exact space will be converted probably next year into an entire bathroom. But until then, I get the opportunity to store all of the things that we need um, out here to maintain our outdoor spaces. Our main outdoor space that we utilize uh, is our vegetable garden. As you know, uh, you can grow vegetables in, as you know, or you may not know, let me say that first. You may not know, but you can grow vegetables in the winter and the fall seasons. I have already begun that process by growing some vegetables and herbs simply from seed, okay? And today, I am going to be fertilizing my already grown, they're, they're pretty much midway at the spaces that I like them to be before I start fertilizing them, but um, I, I am going to fertilize my vegetables. And I wanted you to come along with me and just watch this process just in case you may have questions or need some inspiration for your garden. All right, let me show you what I'm going to use. Now, as you have seen in any, any of my videos regarding planting, I love fish. I love to use fish as my fertilizing method simply because it is an organic method, but also because it puts off an amazing amount of nutrients into my soil, which actually helps my root system give me a larger, but also healthier fruit. And something I really like also about uh, fish uh, to you to be used as fertilizing is that it actually has a way of eliminating pests. I don't really know all the science behind that, but I have seen pests die off simply when I use my fish in my planting. Now, today, like I said, we're not planting my plants that we're going to go head over to are already planted. They've been growing from seed uh, probably since the middle of September. Actually, I can give you the date was September. September 13th was the day that I planted my seeds. And I'll let you get that update when you see how fruitful they have become. But I wanted to show you the, the uh, my main, <clears throat> my product that I like to use. I'm sorry, I'm, I got stuff on the ground too over here. But the product that I like to use is called Alaska Fish Fertilizer. Now, y'all, basically what this is, this is fish blended up in a bottle. Uh, you can only imagine the smell of this, of the contents within here. Uh, but it has been proven, at least in my in my circumstances over the years that this has been the main reason why I yield such a beautiful crop every year, no matter in the spring, fall, winter, summer, I always have an amazing crop and I do owe it to this. And of course the Lord Jesus Christ above. Okay. Now I want to take mention that, uh, I'm going to read just a few things off of here. That's important for you to know. Fish has been used as a natural source of plant nutrients for centuries. Alaska Fish Fertilizer, which is this one, which is also the 511, provides a rich source of organic matter that breaks down and releases nutrients into the soil to enhance the strength and vigor of your plants. Additionally, naturally occurring soil microbes thrive and work their best in soil-rich in soil rich in organic matter. Alaska fertilizer is ideal for use on all plants, including vegetables, vegetable gardens, fruits, roses, shrubs, trees, and container plants. So um, I wanted to read that part on there verbatim, just so you know, if you're looking for a fertilizer that is not just specific to one item, fish fertilizer is definitely the one to go. For me, this is an all and be all. This is an all in one. I can use it on everything that I grow. I have a couple of bottles of this. Of course, I still do have some of my other ways, you know, your lime, you know, your, your holly tone. I still have 
all of my other granule types of um, fertilizers as you can see, but this one is always my go-to. I have other bottles of that also over here on the side. One thing I like about this also is that you don't need a lot to uh, actually fertilize your plants, especially um, if you have a dedicated watering can. So what I use for this is I use the cap and what you're gonna see me do is going to pour two cap, two or three capfuls into my uh, watering can, fill it up with some water and then go ahead and start watering my plants, okay? All right, so enough about all of that. Let's go ahead and get to the plants. All right, so we're over here at the vegetable garden. I'm gonna give you a look around um, too before we get started. Uh, but I want you to know that over here, it's doing a lot of stuff before I turn you around. There's a lot of stuff going on, but uh, keep in mind there's vision, okay? <laughs> there is vision. Uh, and, I'm, and the reason why I'm really giving you guys a much more broader view of the property is because I think it's important for us to have understanding too. Well, I think it's also important for me to share that a lot of times when we think, look at farmers and when we think people who do manual labor outside, we sometimes only picture men doing it. And not to say that my men in my house can't do it. Like I said, I have five sons. If I've never said that before, I want you to know I have five sons and a wonderful, humongous husband who is amazing at doing a lot of handiwork. But something that I'm very passionate about is the outdoor space. So a lot of times um, I've had conversations with people where they're like, you know, why are you doing all that heavy lifting? And really, I really did not do really any heavy lifting yet. Uh, the other heavy lifting that I have did is not even something that you've seen yet. But... Uh, I think it's important to remember that every, every job is not always assigned to a gender. Uh, 
I enjoy the outdoor space. I love it. Um, and I think it's important for other women to understand too that if it's something that you enjoy, it's something that you love, those activities are yours. Uh, own them and be proud. All right, enough of my little soapbox. I wanna go ahead and show you guys what I've been working on. All right, here's my vegetable garden and what it has become so far. Um, I know that uh, a lot of times we think, oh, I need to install a garden and I need to, to fill up this extreme big amount of space. And if that's something that you do, if that's the type of person that you are, I think you should still go at it. Not a hater about that at all. But for myself um, and my family, we started our vegetable garden at this property in raised beds. Uh, this is about, this entire space over here is actually about an acre, okay? Will this whole space be filled up with raised beds? No, but a third of it will be. But to start, we will, we started with just three. Let me give you an understanding of the reason why, because I think it's important for me to share this too. We don't want to overextend ourselves. I think a lot of times when people began gardening, they start off with so much zeal, so much, um, you know, anxiousness that they want to see the fruit of their labor immediately without understanding that a lot of that goes, a lot of work that goes into gardening is patience. That's one of your, your, your biggest seeds that you will sow is patience and not just patience with the things that grow but also how you grow in gardening um if you are a beginning gardener and really um an intermediate advanced gardener i've been gardening now for 10 years and i still consider myself a beginner simply because i'm always open to learning okay but the reason why we started off with these three and the reason why I always think people should start out very small when they're start, uh, beginning to garden is because you want to take time to learn your environment, learn the plants, and learn the different things that, that surround you, your pests, your, your sunlight exposure, okay? As well as, and this is the biggest one, your work ethic, okay? Um, for me, like I've shared before, I really do love gardening. I also love being outside. For the majority of my family, they do not have that much information about gardening. So the reason why I chose to start our garden at this property off in raised beds is because I wanted to make it easy on my entire family regarding that, okay? I know that no one except myself will be coming out here all the time every day checking on our plants i will however be training my family here and there with small bits and pieces of education and of course hands-on chores to teach them the importance of a work uh, 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 of a diligent work ethics uh in the garden and in any, any parts of our outdoor spaces okay and so i said that to say you may think, yes, and originally, okay, I'm gonna open my garden, I'm gonna start it, I'm gonna install it, and it's gonna be all set. And I'm gonna plant the seeds, and that's it. And I'm just gonna probably give it a few days where I'm looking at it and you know yielding fruit. But that is not realistic, okay? Your garden is gonna need your protection, okay? It's also gonna need your, your attention, not every once in a while, but daily. Okay, and if you do not estimate yourself as a person already, let's say that, already with ma with minor things, if you're not the type of person that's always cleaning your entire bedroom or cleaning your bathroom or cleaning the kitchen or, you know, if you even sometimes even go to bed with the dishes in the sink, I would not start by, you know, doing a major installation of seeds or you know or type of crop simply because you have to develop that type of work ethics that type of diligence so i wanted to just share that first because i know 
Um, some of some people may look at a space and say, yes, this is a perfect place to garden and I'm going to do it right away. But that that initial that initial feeling is not something that can last throughout the entire growing seasons. So just keep that in mind when you decide to install a garden. Uh, it's OK to start off small. OK, don't ever despise small beginnings. All right. Um, I know for a fact this entire space will be filled with crops. Some of it will be raised beds. Some of it will be ingrown. And in the middle of this space will be in a, a beautiful greenhouse that will be built. But um, I'm not in a hurry. I do enjoy the small stuff because I know later on <laughs> um, that by that time when we have much more out here that i will have much more hands much more education and things that will actually benefit this space all right let's get into the items that we're growing before we begin fertilizing okay and this first planter it is basically my root vegetables all right as you can see here i got a row of carrots growing and i have a row of beets growing uh I did have, well, I still do, really. Um, I have some sage. I've already did a major harvest from this sage when we had COVID, as well as I had a, few, um, a cousin that was sick. And so I used some sage um, in our healing methods. But um, I, can, I guess I could talk about that one day. But I wanted to just uh, bring focus here on the growing that is going on in this planter this race bed rather let me give you guys this little sneak peek here look at that beet just growing growing away of course i'm going to pull back some just so you can see that look at that look at that beautiful 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 and these are way too close together, but they're still doing good. One of the benefits of a raised bed is that you get to put in the nutrients that you want. And this entire bed is filled with compost. This entire bed is filled with compost. Let's see if we can see anything from the carrot. It's usually hard to get, get a glimpse in on a carrot. Yeah, it's still very, very hard to get in there. But we're growing. We're definitely growing. All right. And it looks like I had a kid pull out a carrot prematurely. So, yeah. <laughs> we're growing. Definitely growing carrots for sure. All right, let's go over to the second bed here. And I love these center blocks. Uh, we will be capping and mortaring the center blocks on the side just to have a more permanency. Uh, but as of now, they are all loose. They can all be moved according to my liking. Right here is one of my favorite herbs is peppermint. We got some dead leaves that fell from the oak tree. But here's some herbs here. Wonderful peppermint, smells so good smells so good okay and I'll, as you can see here guys I have broccoli and Brussels sprouts and it looks like we have some some that have been ate here also outside of that we're doing good we're still doing good got even some beets over here we got some oregano wonderful healing properties from oregano love that as well same as also with um peppermint really good healing properties good health benefits brussels sprouts are trying to come on in oh yeah oh yeah this fertilizing when we get to fertilizing this is going to really give it a good boost and feed it really well okay over here 
we have our cabbages. We have cabbage and chamomile, and we have some thyme. It's hiding behind this little leaf, but yeah, we got some thyme growing over here. You know, wonderful health benefits. Amazing, of course, in poultry. But we got that growing over there. So we got our red cabbage here. Just a few heads, three heads actually to be exact. One, two, and then three. We have a uh, a wood, some wood that's actually breaking it, breaking itself down. So we, you know, let we gonna mind our business and let it do what it's gonna do. <laughs> okay, and then we got some cabbage heads here. Um, and if you know anything about growing cabbage heads, you know that these are all planted way too close. <laughs> way too close but uh it doesn't mean that they won't grow they just may not give me a very very large head which is fine with me very fine with me because i could still use all of the leaves so I, I would say probably about five heads are in this one little space and then my chamomile which guys, I just love, I love, I bought this one as a start. When I purchased it, it was probably about this big. But like I shared with you, this entire bed is filled with compost. So organic matter is one of the main things I prefer to use for everything. I am not a, uh, um, I don't wanna call out those names of those companies, but I'm not trying to grow anything miraculously. Uh, <laughs> I definitely want things to be grown organically because uh, it is essential to my own health to know what's going in it. All right. And then we got some rosemary that I have already pruned drastically when I was making a few um, whole chickens. <laughs> oh, get that out of there. Yeah. I already pruned those drastically. So, yeah, that's pretty much what we got here, guys. Let's get the fertilizing. Let's get the fertilizing. Oh, you see some topsoil because we have some holes out there that I had to fill. Okay. But that's the rest of the space. It is already slightly fenced in. Okay. This area right here is where I planted those strawberries, my bare root strawberries. As you can see, I'm gonna dig those up because I'm gonna be moving these these strawberry plants from right here into a special place that I want that I think will grow better. But outside of that, guys, this entire space is the vegetable garden. I just love it. It's beautiful. Um, what you don't know is that there's a persimmons tree a wild persimmon tree. Uh, let me make sure this one right here. That's a persimmon tree where I'm right where I'm pointing at right there. So um, I'm gonna learn a little bit about persimmons. Don't really know that much about it, but definitely gonna learn my learn as much as I can. Um, something that also is very significant. You may see some tree stumps. There's one right there, but there's two more. And those were large trees that we had cut down because they were heavily shading this area. Uh, I do believe that they had goats in this area before, as you can see the little shelter there, there's a shelter there, and there's like a, probably like a sheepdog home right there. But uh, yes, we had those cut down and it just really keeps this sun heavily over here i just love it i can't wait for the greenhouse to be installed in the center of this and just for our in-ground garden when it when it's time to put that in I, i'm excited about that but until then there will be you have this three and then there will be three more rows of three okay um of the raised beds and then after that you will have um a greenhouse in the middle and then on the sides, you will have your in-ground. Um, we'll have our in-ground stuff like our corn, uh, watermelon, all of our squashes, basically. But yeah, and the orchard is not nowhere remotely on this side. It's actually on the other side of the buildings. So there's one, two, three, four. 
structures and then you have the orchard on that side okay but let's get this fertilizing on and popping It's important when you're gardening, oh, I'm sorry, when you're watering your plants, especially when you're fertilizing your plants, to try your best not to water your foliage. You don't really want to fertilize the foliage, okay? You want to get close, as close to the base of your plant as possible so that your roots are receiving that nutrition directly. water soluble fertilizers are very helpful because it just doesn't need to um, be broken down over time it's getting right to the to the root immediately that's a benefit All right, that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video, I'll love it if you can give it a like, uh, oh, a thumbs up. And if you like seeing videos like this on this channel, it'll be helpful if you subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I did today or about the products that I use, I'll be, I will be happy to share it with you. Uh, just leave me a comment. And if you have your preferred fertilizing methods that you use that you'll think will be helpful over here, please leave that in the comments. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you again. Bye-bye.